All right, Salim Razai here. So I'm gonna talk about this trial called the ED Awareness Study, Awareness with Paralysis. Now the full blog post was written and published on RebelEM by Rob Bryant, um, who is an amazing emergency physician, but I thought this study was important enough that we should talk about it. So the clinical question these authors were trying to answer was, what is the prevalence of awareness with paralysis in ED patients receiving mechanical ventilation? This was a single academic emergency department and it was a prospective cohort study. After they went through all their patients and finally boiled it down, they had 383 patients that were mechanically ventilated in the emergency department. And 10 patients or 2.6% had awareness with paralysis. In other words, they were paralyzed, but they were completely aware that they were paralyzed. So they were not sedated appropriately. The biggest risk factor for this was the use of rocuronium as your paralytic agent. And it's well known that the duration of action is close to an hour for rocuronium. And if you're using bigger doses, it could be even a little bit longer. So a little thought experiment here. 2.6% doesn't sound like a lot, although I think this number should be 0%. It's complete torture to have patients that are paralyzed and completely aware of it. So let's imagine that an average ED physician does about 12 intubations over the course of a year. And there've been multiple studies that have looked at this and the range is anywhere from five intubations all the way up to like 19 or 20. So I picked a number somewhere in the middle, just an arbitrary number. Now imagine you have a group of 40 physicians, which is what my group is. And that would equate to about 480 intubations per year. So if we apply that 2.6%, that's 12 patients that are awake with paralysis per year. That's 12 too many. Now, take that and multiply that by the thousands of emergency departments that are around globally, and you can see how astronomical this number is. So solution to the problem. So typically the way this works is we order our rapid sequence intubation medications, we get the patient intubated, they get put on the mechanical ventilator, and then there's this delay. There's this delay of getting sedation and analgesia up. And so the solution is actually really simple. What you should do is order your sedation and analgesia at the time that you're ordering your RSI medications. This will ensure that there's now no delay and that your patients will be adequately sedated and have analgesia, even if the rocuronium is lasting 50 minutes to an hour. Clinical bottom line of this study. Awareness with paralysis, about 2.6%. It's significantly higher risk with the use of rocuronium, which is the longer paralytic medication. And the solution to this is just order your sedation and analgesia at the time that you're ordering your rapid sequence medications. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I think this is something that needs to be highlighted and something that's occurring way too often. I see it in my clinical practice and I think it's something that we need to get on top of and it's a simple fix. Thanks for tuning in. Leave me your thoughts and questions.